Great plan, you guys. Um, let me show you a couple things here. So, you know, you do you do a lot of things really well. Your grip is awesome. Way to go. Most people's grip sucks, but you are very good at a lot of the golf ball locations. Great. Um, you look fantastic over the golf ball. This is a shot you hit very well on the left screen. I want to say it was number nine, you know, laying up here, hitting some shot. Now, you know, there's a big turn, no question about it, but a lot of softness in those arms. And, you know, there's, I heard a comment during the round, you know, you kind of topped one. I want to say it was on 14. And what happens when people top it is that, you know, you can kind of see as you, as your swing, let me just play this for you. It's a very nice golf swing. So, and I think I put it in slow motion. So it's kind of going in slow motion a little bit. And we'll come back to uh, the start. But, you, you know, you set up with reasonably soft arms at a dress, which I'm fine with. And my computer's lagging here for some reason. So we'll go over to this down the line one here, or sorry, the, the booty cam, right? So as you're making your turn, you want to be careful that we don't let the trail arm get too overbent and to a point where the elbow gets too far behind us, okay? Because as I take this one down through impact, and I don't know which, uh, this might have been, oh, this was 11T, okay? So as you're going kind of through impact here, you know, you can kind of see you push off the ground onto the left toe, which is pretty common. You know, I'm looking right here for the second, right? A lot of ladies, a lot of men do that. They push, and that's a big deal. But you can kind of see how the elbows are really soft, and this is a you know element of a chicken wing, okay? And so let's kind of go through this face on again. Kind of soft arms. And then as we kind of come down to the impact, my computer's jumping around here, sorry. You know, this was a good shot where you, you know, everything was measured up pretty well. But the radius of, you know, from your mid chest to your hands is a little bit narrowed by the fact your elbows are separated, right? You can clearly see that on the right screen a little easier than the left. You know, if I put in any tour player, um, I'm just going to use, since I just hit one a second ago, I'm going to just use me as an example. Okay, so, you know, hitting a shot, you know, the, the my arms aren't over bending, right? So as I'm hitting this shot, the golf ball is getting collected through here. And then my arms stay pretty long post impact. Now, and let me kind of explain this to you and you mess with it how you want to when it makes sense to you because really it's all personal. But um, let me go back to the cameras here. Okay. All right. So welcome to the garage. Um, <clears throat> one of my products, where is it? Oh, here it is. This thing here is used by tons of tour players, gratefully, because that's what helps sell it. When it gets used by a lot of good players, people go, oh, I must need one of those. Not that you have to buy this. I'm just going to use this as an example, okay? And people hate this thing. You know why they hate it? They hate it because it kind of, they feel like they can't, you know, move with it. And here's the reason, because it's really easy just to kind of take this, bend the arms and then kind of bend the arms rather than just, right, rather than the athletic event of really turning and keeping a bit more structure. Because think about... Oh, 14, you made the comment, oh, I must have lifted up, I must have topped, I must have peaked. You know, for as long as the sun's been, you know, coming up on the east and going down on the west, everybody says that, but that's not the case. And when I start my golf school, I, I purposely top shots, and I'll give you an example, okay? So I'll, I'll ask somebody, hey, watch my head, and here, I'll give you the, I'll give you the example right here, and you'll see what I mean. And I can put up Annika Sorenstam, the greatest female golfer ever to play. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna top this golf ball, and you tell me if my head comes up. This ball is gonna bounce into the mat and almost bounce into the ceiling because I'm, I'm topping it so hard. Okay, so watch my head. 
Okay. So this video will play back here. Look at my head and the, my head's not coming up at all. In fact, it's kind of diving down. But if you kind of look at this, I'm really crowning the golf ball. Okay, so I do this for people all the time, right? So my head's staying down there, but yet I top the ball, the ball pushed into the mat. Now the only reason it doesn't skitter along the ground is because the mat is a firmer, you know, firmer surface, right? If it was grass, it would just go blunder like, you know, a couple of feet ahead of us. So every time somebody tops a golf ball, they always say, oh, I must have lifted up, I must have peaked. Now, I stayed down and topped a golf ball. How did I do that? Well, I did it by, you know, letting my elbows separate. Because think about this. The quickest way to reduce a radius, okay, a swing radius, is just to do this. You know, so if I'm at a golf ball and I do this, what am I going to do? I'm going to miss it. My swing is going to go over top of the golf ball. So I could stay in my posture, crown the golf, or, you know, whiff the golf ball, top the golf ball, and go, oh, I must have peaked. Not really. What happens is we kind of separate our elbows. That reduces our radius, you know, very, very fast. Now, you've got an excellent golf swing. You play really nice golf, okay? The, the thing that I think would help you get a little bit more reliable, a little bit more energy, is to realize that in golf, a really good feeling is to feel like arms push away from us at all times. Now, I would say to you that during a backswing, there's no question that a, your right arm has to bend, but when I'm making a backswing, I'm not, I'm not the one physically just trying to bend it. it. It bends, and I would tell you, when you look at this, you know it's bent, and it's hard even to talk when I do this because you know, my, I'm not trying to physically bend my arms, and I'm certainly, if I turn this way, and you look at the, the booty cam on the, on the left screen, you know, that's my elbow getting a little too far behind me. Well, sometimes I can time that out beautifully, and sometimes I can't if I were to let these arms retract. So the point is, you know, can we feel like we have arms that are a little bit longer, right? And maybe take out some of the, you know, this kind of phony, you know, overswing and manage our elbows better. And the other, the other byproduct of, of managing your elbows is think about your wrists, okay? If you're bending your elbows, then your wrist angles bend a lot. So good, really good players kind of can have a nice, and this goes... This is for Craig. Craig's got a good swing, but really, like certainly as we get older, he's got a, a joke, but he's got to move that ass, meaning that we've got to have a, you know, a reasonable hip turn so that our torso can turn so that we don't have to rely on just kind of overbending arms, okay? So you can imagine I could fake my swing. I could have no turn at all and go, there's my swing parallel to the ground. Well, we know that's not effective. I, most tour players that hit full shots with a 7-iron, 6-iron, 5-iron, that's about it, okay, because they could go here, but they don't because it's they lose reliability. So final comment on this, and this will be the hard thing to kind of get ahead, get in your noggin, and I'll just, um, we'll do two things. I'll hit one demo with this ball on, okay, just to kind of show you what I'm talking about, and you don't, like I said, you don't have to get one of these because it'll drive you crazy. I just want you to think of the concept. First thing, you know, you've played with me a few times now right? The club's never really resting on the ground. You see this event, it's a waggle. That's me feeling the weight of the club in my hands, establishing a radius in my arms and tipping over to the measure of where the grass and ball intersect, okay? So now as I'm moving, I don't ever rest here because that may change my measure to the ball, okay? And you've seen me hit good shots and plenty of goofy shots, but there's a measure, a weight of the club restfully and relaxing in my wrists. Here is the club tapping the ground but not resting. Then I'll hit a shot. Okay, and so this replays. So in the replay here, the ball didn't come out, did it? So if the ball didn't come out, then I really didn't separate my elbows. There's no chicken winging going on and the radius of the club kind of collecting the ball at the bottom, okay, can be pretty reliable. And that's kind of the, you know, and then, you know, you could see that with the ball in place, right? Now, the other massive byproduct to that is the catapult of a good swing. And this is where club golfers, okay, forgive me, amateur golfers, club golfers, this is where they don't ever get it. 
So Jackson, my little guy, right? He's 11, he's 74 pounds. He swings his driver 74 miles an hour. He hits it 200 yards, okay? It's, so 74 pounder hits it really, really far. How does he do that? Because, you know, we have the weight, we have our hands, we have our body. Weight at the end of a stick, hands, body. Well, when you develop, when you take this weight, okay, and I would call the right screen, just look at the right screen for the moment, the club head, hands, body, where this is in an alignment, okay? Now, as we go, keep your eye on the right screen, as we go and put the club out of alignment, there's a managed hinge of the hands, okay, a turn of the body. Now the club's out of alignment, okay? If most club golfers just have this down, 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 down element, okay, and they're trying to stay down, they're trying to keep their head down, they, they, they always think that head down's the magical elixir of good golf. It really isn't, it's, it's, the, it's the thing that keeps you from getting really good. It gets you on the golf course, it gets you to maybe break in 100, but it's the thing that holds you back. Because what we need, here's the weight at the end of the stick, once we put this thing out of alignment, like you see right here on the left screen and right screen, now every golf swing has plenty of down in it. If I drop this club, there's go, it's going down. There's no question it's going down. Okay, sorry, it, that noise triggered the, but that's just making a point. Every swing's got a bunch of down, right? It'll do that a couple times. And then I'll be able to kind of give you an example here. There's down, right? Boom. So there's the downward event of a golf swing. You know, the club's working down, the arms are working down, everything's going down. Now, what really good players have figured out, what my son has figured out to smash the golf ball for his diminutive weight and size, okay, is that while something's going down, Lisa, something's going up. And that takes this handle and takes this club and whips it. As the club's going down, the handle's going up. You know, and so that's why rather than staying down and separating elbows, because this is how most of the people that play in Sunday couples look, to be, to be honest. They stare down at the golf ball. They do this. The club passes. They hit a shot, okay? So, again, this is the swing. They stay down. The club kind of passes. Maybe they hit an okay one. They wonder why it felt good. Maybe it came up short. Um, maybe they chunk it a lot. They, they blade it a lot. This is most of the ladies in the ladies club, okay? They do this. Again, swing, stall, elbow separation, phony finish, good shot, bad shot, whatever shot, okay? Rather than here are some comfortably long arms. On the way down, a, a really good player is learning how to push and rotate so that this event right here, when this club that's out of alignment starts to pass through alignment, kind of lines up. The intersection of club, ball, and turf is an awesome one. And not only that, it's kind of catapulted through here whew, with high speed that hits pretty long shots, okay? Now that's a very courageous jump to make as a golfer. Usually the jump is tough to make as an adult. That's why golf camps three days because it's first day is kind of a, you know, rattle, you know, shift everything around in the kitchen. You can't find anything. Right? Second day, maybe you know where to go get the can opener. Third day, hopefully it comes together, you're left with drills, and away you go. I'm making you this to maybe kind of, you know, help you understand a couple things because you got a beautiful golf swing. We just have to kind of get this weight managed so that when you get to the bottom, things are comfortably long that can clip the ball on the turf. And then the rest of this stuff, you know, is what I call just kind of finishing in style, slowing down in style. So as a club's going down, I'll hit one more shot, we'll talk about it, then I'll send you the video. But here's waggle, right? I feel like I have that black ball between my forearms. I always do, okay? So as I hit a shot, let's hit one here, we'll talk about it. So nice feeling, seven iron, okay, 162 yards. Okay, so, you know, here, as I take control of the speed of this, Here's the downward phase, right? Tons of downward phase. But, you know, the, now everything else is an upward phase. My left shoulder's going up. My legs are pushing into the ground. And that's what lets this kind of all be long here at impact at the bottom rather than elbows separated 
Okay, and that's what lets these arms kind of be longish post impact and up into a finish. And you'll never hear me say, oh, I had lifted my head. Okay, now you're going to see a good player in this relationship looking down all the time. Right? They're going to be gently looking down. The reason is because that seven iron's traveling almost 90 miles an hour. So amateurs look at that and go, oh, I got to keep my head down because that's what good players do. No, not really, because guess what? My head is following that ball like it's hitting this net that's, you know, 10 feet ahead of me. And I'm almost and I see the ball before it actually touches the ground. Right. So really, how long is my head staying down? It's really not. It's just a fluid, fluid motion. OK, so let me put one more thought in here. Let me put in. Let me go and put in Annika Sorenstam, my favorite. Let's see, here she is. There we go. And put her right there. Okay, so, you know, Annika hitting a ball, right? Here's a motion, here's all the down in golf, and then the commensurate up. So there's her head at impact, and watch how quickly her head follows a driver, right? So she's not trying to keep her head down. She was only the best ever, okay? And even her head looks sooner than that when it comes time to wedges and things. Anyway, hope you're great. Great playing with you and Craig. Tell Craig to move his ass, and he'll do great. And so will you. You're, you